Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Riot and Tashi Barucha T3000. Uh, long overdue for this channel. There's also a smaller one, the T2500, and I think there's at least one larger model. Um, these are really interesting. I, I have seen them for uh, such a long time, and I thought I need to get... I'd like to eventually have all three on, on the channel, um, but uh, these are still available. You can actually buy these, right? And I'm going to link it right down below so you can check it out if you'd like. Thanks so much to the gentleman who uh, loaned this for me to review. I really appreciate that. This will go back to him when I'm done. Thanks to my generous patrons who are supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement. Uh, I believe this is the medium boy. Um, which comes in at, yeah, let's make sure that's right, about seven inches. The blade length is definitely over three inches, so keep that in mind, about three and an eighth. And then your cutting edge is coming in at about three inches, maybe a hair less. Let's go ahead and do a few size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. You can see here that this guy, while it has a lot of presence, uh, it certainly is a little bit shorter than the Ontario Rat Model 2. We'll just do a couple more size comparisons here. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Definitely a little bit shorter than the Para 3, but cutting edge? Yeah, it actually has more cutting edge than the Para 3. Uh, and then finally, the Benchmade Bug Out. Definitely a little bit shorter than the Benchmade Bug Out. How's the action on this guy? Well, it's a Riot, so the action is going to be nice and controlled and, I mean, very smooth. It does need a little bit of encouragement on the way down, but that's the thing with Riot. Um, you uh, you know, sometimes you'll get a blade that will completely and totally fall shut, and it's usually after it's broken in a little bit. Um, and, but I like that. Their pivots are tight, keeping everything nice and held together and snug, and the blade always stays centered. Uh, and then everything is nice and smooth and super consistent, and then you get a safe closing action rather than some sort of, you know, wobbly guillotine that comes down on your finger and needs to be readjusted after a while. So this is very similar to other reouts that I've felt. It's exactly the type of action that I prefer on all of my knives. Super high quality, I really like that. Um, let's go ahead and do carry profile. So first thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It is a little tiny bit thicker, but it's also contoured. So that's something that I uh, will always happily take if I'm gonna get a uh, knife that's a little bit thicker. Up against the PM2 and Para 3 for length and height. It's really not all that tall or long. It's actually a pretty compact object, so you shouldn't have any trouble in that department. Let's take a look at the inside. You can get my flashlight in the tools section of my description. Uh, there's no real milling. There's a couple of little teeny tiny holes there, but I, that's, those aren't really weight reduction holes. So we've got titanium with carbon fiber on the inlays, and we have M390 for the blade steel, which it's gonna say right there. Uh, weight on this guy, I'm gonna guess this weighs something like three and a half ounces. I don't know, let's find out. Uh, 3.74 ounces, so for a small knife as it is, people are gonna say, oh, the ratios aren't very good, but it's still a pretty compact object, object that weighs only 3.74 ounces. So do with that information what you will. I think most people will be, um, you know, not anchored to the ground by carrying this. It's gonna be pretty good. Uh, hardware check, let's get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable, and you can find them right down in the section of my description that once again talks about the tools I use on this channel. I think everything on this knife is T8. Yeah, we got T8 for the pivot, T8 for the steel lock bar insert screw, T8 for the body screw down here, and even T8 for the pocket clip. Wonderful, thank you very much. And it's very minimal because these screws go all the way through to the other side. You can see that the hardware is completely hidden on this side, which is actually a really nice touch. So should be uh, very simple, very, very, very easy disassembly. Uh, blade stock thickness, let's go ahead and measure that here real quick. Put that guy right there, whoops, is it gonna stay? <laughs> there we go, not really. I'm probably gonna have to hold it while I measure it. Oh, my dialogue. Sometimes the stuff that comes out of my mouth, <laughs> I don't think about until after I say it. Okay, family-friendly content. Let's go ahead and measure this here. We have 155 thousandths, which is definitely on the thick side for a knife like this. But um, that's, you know, Riot just likes that blade stock thickness, right? And apparently the designer. So 
And by the way, to give credit where it's due, yeah, uh, this designer has done a lot of work with Riot and uh, pretty well-known uh, makers. Always got super interesting stuff, so very cool. Okay, so we have a very futuristic, very, you know, kind of like the whole theme of this knife. Everything goes together. This is obviously created by somebody who had a vision for the blade and the handle profile and everything like that. And I got to say, it looks good in that sense that everything looks like it matches all the way down to the pocket clip, which is really... Sometimes I'm, I get a little nervous with knives like these, and I'm like, this is very thematic. How is it the pocket clip going to be a letdown? Oh, good. Uh, I, I want the pocket clip to go with the design. So I'm really happy that we have a 3D mill titanium pocket clip and that it goes with the design. I'll admit, for the longest time, I thought these knives were integrals because I could not see the seam in the back from the uh, pictures. Isn't this nice? Like, look at this. The back of this is beautiful. It just looks like... I don't know, it looks like a gem cut from titanium, right? Uh, really nice, but it is, there is actually a seam. It's just super, you know, this is why, guys, this is why Riots generally cost more money because we get features like this. I understand, you're just looking at M390 carbon fiber and titanium, right? There should be a static value on that, right? No, it's because not all of that stuff is executed the same way, right? This is gonna take some pretty, uh, you know, precision machine work, uh, and of course to make it consistent because they do make these things in fairly large, uh, fairly large batches. So this is impressive, uh, really, really cool. The only thing that would have been more impressive were, you know, is if it were actually a, an integral. But that's fine that it's not. The flipper tab, it honestly, this knife looks like it's not going to be comfortable, uh, comfortable to flip, but it actually is. It's actually plenty comfortable to flip. And it's uh, pretty easy to get back into the uh, handle here. There's no double clutch. It is very close, I'll admit. This right here is where the detent ball is just there. It's not on the face of the blade now, and right there it is. So, once you go from here to here, usually the detent ball will not be up on the face of the blade, so no double clutch, but it is close. Sorry, I'm getting fingerprints all over this blade, and it is a belt satin finish so it's really picking them up access to the lock bar is pretty good it's not raised but it is cut out on both sides and since we have a fairly thick blade stock there's quite a bit of room to get in there i don't really have much of an issue by the way this is less of a push button and more of a light switch flipper but the detent is tuned correctly i would call that a medium to medium heavy detent for this size of knife relationship to the flipper tab right so uh feels pretty good the inlay work, which is <laughs> par for the course uh, for Riot, is amazing. They always have perfect inlay work. It's just so nice. I like the position of this piece of carbon fiber. I, I, I like how it follows the lines down here and the lines up here, right, right behind the chamfer line. It just looks good, right? It doesn't offer any utilitarian benefit, but it looks nice. Um, I really like that the hardware is completely and totally hidden back here you can only see it on this side that's great ergonomic lines you know what they're okay i it just this whole thing it just doesn't look like a knife that's going to be comfortable in any way shape or form and you know don't get me wrong it's not the most comfortable thing in the entire world right i'm still gonna say this is no better than a b for ergonomics maybe a b minus it's okay it's just kind of like wow i didn't expect it to actually be comfortable. Part of it is, is that this cutout here is actually made for two fingers. You can actually get two fingers in there and honestly, just just barely a full grip. If your hands are bigger than mine, I wear an XL glove, which means probably a pretty normal hand size for a dude. I always, I know I always shatter dreams. There's always, always there's always a few guys watching who are like, you know, their whole life, they, they just, that, the pride, you know, they go to Home Depot and they buy those XL gloves the pride of checking out. Yeah, that's right. Bring those up. I got big hands. No, you don't. You have regular hands. <laughs> you have regular hands. Regular hands. Come on. Those those boys out there, the guys and gals out there who have truly XL hands, you're going to be falling off back here, right? But if you're wearing XL gloves, you have the same size hands as me. <laughs> you can just barely you can just barely get a full grip on this guy. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> up on a tangent blade shape is super cool we have a recurve tanto which you know i don't like recurves 
unless they are Tantos. It's like, if you're going to go, go full send, right? It's kind of neat. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a pain to sharpen over time. You're going to lose that that uh, angle right here, and it's going to start to round off. But, eh, okay. Um, the uh, flat carries out about 50% the length of the blade. There's a nice swedge up here. The style of the blade is very nice. And it's also pretty sharp. It's not the thinnest behind the edge, but it's also not incredibly thick. EDC tasks, it'll do fine. Your slicing tasks are going to get a little bit hung up by the change in angle and things like that. It might not be the, you know, the best thing to hang on to and use to cut down, uh, to break down a thick cardboard box. But regular cutting tasks... Yeah, you're going to appreciate the style. You know, it's just going to be one of those things where you're going to be cutting with it and go, yeah, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world, but I like how the knife looks. So there you go. What are you going to do? Uh, it says Riyadh on this side, and then it just has the designer's logo on this side. And it says M390. That's fine. The edges up here, nothing gets sharp until we get to this uh, part of the swedge right here. Back here, it's fine. It's just this belt satin finished part of the swedge. I really love Riyadh's... Um, kind of slightly reflective tumbled finish a lot better. I know they can do a great one, but they also do a nice satin finish. Uh, so this is fine, right? Uh, no issue there. There's no sharpening choil, so you got a little, I mean, this is about as good as I've seen this look, uh, this area right here on a knife that does not have a sharpening choil. So good job, Riot, for not making this area ugly. However, over time, it's just gonna be ugly because if you're gonna sharpen it and use it, it's just gonna be, it's going to smile back there. So, yeah. No jimping. I don't think it really needs it. Um, something that's interesting, you guys probably notice it. Yeah, the stops are garaged right there. Um, so, you don't see these, the, the, they're, they're blade stops that like on an XM18 or a ZTO562 would be external. But because of this design, they are garaged or housed or however you want to say that inside of the frame. So, you don't see them. So, that's nice. Uh, I like that. It's a nice touch. Extra little detail there. We have a lanyard compartment. I say that because it's, you know, it's shaped like a little square. It's almost like a, it reminds me of a parking garage. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why. It just kind of does, right? So there you go, lanyard people. You've got a place for your lanyards. The pocket clip, like I said, it goes really well with the overall design. It is a little bit skinny and a little bit pointy, right? And you can feel it a little bit while you're squeezing, but it's really not that bad. And it's mainly because this area up here is flat. Uh, it's nice. They've got this extra little line right here just, just to give it a little extra character. This is a, well, it's a it's a frame lock with an overlay. Some people might call that a, you know, bolster lock or sub frame lock, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's, a, it's a frame lock with an overlay. It's got a steel lock bar insert. It's doubling as the over travel stop. We are locking up at something like 25%. No blade play up, down, left, or right. We have no pivot lash, which I've never felt a re-out with pivot lash. And we have a nice clicky detent. Come on, focus. Yeah, real nice. How's the centering? Dead on. So this is one of those that has an aesthetic that some people will like. Sorry, I'm getting my fingerprints off of it. The T3000 has an aesthetic that some people will love and some people won't like at all. The truth is, it's a lot more comfortable. You're looking at this and you're thinking it does not look comfortable. Uh, you're in the same boat I was, right? Uh, it's actually a lot more comfortable than I thought it would be. It's not amazing. It's just, you know, I, I did not, uh, there was no way for me to, I never would have guessed that it would actually be kind of comfortable, right? Uh, like the blade shape, I love that the theme, it's all like the same theme. It looks really cool, really futuristic. The build quality on this thing is absolutely excellent. Um, the manipulation is also substantially more comfortable than I thought it was going to be. Um, so that's all really good. Execution is great. This is typical Riot. This knife has been around for a long time, right? It's it's kind of it's one of those things where it's not. It's just never. I don't think it was ever destined to be a super popular design um, because it's going to speak to a very specific audience. What's the price on it? Um, it's uh, three hundred and ten dollars for micarta, three hundred and twenty for carbon fiber. I think the carbon fiber ones are a little bit harder to find right now. I also feel like this is likely discontinued. I don't know that for sure. So if you're if you've been on the fence about it, right, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if when these finally do disappear, they disappear forever. Uh, $310, while it is a lot of money, uh, we are looking at a Riot with some steps up in terms of overall execution. If execution and, you know, the amount of work that's involved with shaping the raw materials into what they are here, if that's not something you put value in, 
then you're not going to see value in this, right? I mean, it factually does cost more money to do something like this than to make some flat, you know, pillar construction frame lock. Um, but, you know, if you just just can't wrap your mind around that, then you're not going to see the value there, right? For everybody else who uses their brain. Oh, man. Ooh, that was salty. <laughs> So many people are like, I'm going to type him up and come on and tell him what I think. My brain works just fine. <laughs> um, yeah, no, the value is uh, the value's there, right? I mean, it's, we're looking at a Riot. It's, uh, you know, it's actually on the lower end for a Riot, so not bad. Do I recommend it? I mean, if you just really like the look, like, there are so many amazing utilitarian knives out there that have both unique design elements, amazing execution, and all the way around, incredible utilitarian function, right? Everything is really, this is a little bit more form than function. It's pretty good. I mean, it's shockingly, the er like I said, the ergonomic lines, flipping and manipulation, it's all a lot better than I thought it was gonna be, but I don't think it's gonna quite sync up with everybody, right? So I'm not gonna say run out, you have to have this, this is the best thing ever, but it's another solid option from Riot that has some really interesting design features and it's also very unique looking. For those of you who collect super unique looking knives that have, you know, one continuous theme about them, uh, yeah, you might really like this, right? But for everybody else, there's other stuff out there. Yeah, I think that's where I'm going to conclude. Good knife though, really cool. Thanks again to the gentleman who loaned this to me. This will be headed back your way soon. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.